Welcome to this Nexperia quick learning video. Today we're going to talk about trench MOSFETs and their operation linear mode. I'm Adam Brown, I'm an innovation manager here with, with, with Nexperia. So first of all, what is, what is linear mode? And uh, to describe what linear mode is, we want to consider this, these output characteristics for a typical MOSFET, that's an Nexperia MOSFET, the PSMN 015-100B. And we've got the output characteristics here in the top right. So what do we see? This is the current coming out of the MOSFET for different source drain voltages and different gate biases. So on the y-axis, we've got the, the source drain current. And on the, on the x-axis here, we've got the source drain voltage across the MOSFET going out, out, out to, to 10 volts. And we see a whole series of, of lines plotted on, on, on the graph. So these are with different gate biases are plotted to the, to the MOSFET. So at, uh, at 5 volts, we get a small amount of current coming from the MOSFET. As we increase the, the bias to, to 6 volts, we get more in, an increased current. 7 volts, we get more current and then 8, 9, 10, and by 9, 10 and 20 you see that the, you don't actually get much more current out of the MOSFET. The MOSFET is basically designed to run with a gate bias normally of about 10 volts. But what we also see when we look at the output characteristics, there are kind of effectively two quite distinct regions. The region where the MOSFET is normally operated is at low source drain voltages and what we suppose we would call the resistive mode, because here with 10 or 20 volts on the gate basically you've got a linear relationship, the current increases linearly with the source drain voltage. And this is the way that the MOSFET would normally be, would be operated. The MOSFET is basically a switch, you would give it a high gate bias, and you want the resistance across the MOSFET to be as little as possible. So that is the resistive mode. And it's actually, yeah, because it's a low source drain voltage, it's actually a low power dissipation situation. So that's where you normally would operate the MOSFET, keep it cool, dissipate as little energy as possible. When you're turning a MOSFET on and off, normally that means you, you, you start from a high source drain voltage with no current, so it could be out at 10 or 20 or 30 volts or higher, and you want to get to that situation where you've got the low voltage and the high current. In that transition, the MOSFET has to normally come through a region of what we call the linear mode. So this region where we've got high source drain voltage and high current flowing through the MOSFET. And this region is what we call the linear mode, where you can see the, ca the, the output characteristics, the current coming out of the MOSFET, is pretty independent, independent of the source drain voltage for the strong function of the gate bias. Now this situation, this is high power dissipation. We've got high source drain voltage and high current. So the, and if you operate for a long length of time, or any length of time at all effectively, the MOSFET can start to get hot. And if it can start to get hot, what we're going to be concerned about is can we get thermal runaway in the MOSFET? Could, will, it be, will it be stable operating in this area? So we'll look at that in a bit more detail in a minute. Before we move on, I just want to, um, we're going to, have to, to follow the conversation, we're going to talk about three MOSFETs in particular to illustrate the stability in linear mode. So on the, on the table here, we've got three MOSFETs from different uh, generations. So Originally I talked about the PSMN 015100B. This was a MOSFET released in yeah, 1999, a long time ago, and it was a very early generation of the trench MOSFETs. So here we've got this thing called cell pitch. That's the distance in the silicon technology between the different trenches. And there was a 9 micron cell pitch. And this MOSFET had a typical resistance of 12 milliohms. <coughs> Basically this MOSFET is the biggest piece of silicon that we could sort of fit in a T2 pack package. So quite a typical product. We're comparing it with two other 100 volt rated MOSFETs. The Dash 100 means these are 100 volt rated MOSFETs. So the next generation that came along in 2002, the cell pitch had decreased from 9 microns to 4 microns to make this PSMN 009100B. And by drink, shrinking the cell pitch, it meant we got more trenches being in this area, got higher current density through the device, but also then a lower resistance. And you can see that the, the typical resistance of the product, a 10 volt gate drive, dropped from 12 milliohms down to 7.5 milliohms. Move on again, some more time. And we got to another generation of technology, 2010, this PSMN 3R8100BS was developed. Again, the biggest piece of silicon, the same die size as the other two products. But now the cell pitch has come from 9 to 4 to 2 microns. We've got a very small cell pitch, far more current density through the MOSFET. And so the resistance has dropped now from 12 milliohms to 7.5 down to typically 3.3 milliohms. And the primary function always of a MOSFET is a switch. You want it to have as low as resistance as possible. So for its primary function, a PSMN 3R8100BS is a better product. It's got a lower resistance. But now what we want to consider is, okay, that's when they're in the in their resistive mode, but how do these MOSFETs perform um, in, in the linear mode situation? So that, that's, uh, let's move down now to these charts down the bottom. Okay, so first of all, we'll consider this graph down the bottom left. It's the, the transfer characteristics. We've talked about this output characteristic. And um, what we want to consider now is if we have a fixed source drain voltage, for example, we we'll sit at 10 volts, how does the current out of the MOSFET change as a function of the gate bias? And that's exactly what's been plotted on this graph, the transfer characteristics. So we've got the gate bias along the bottom, 
and we've got the source drain voltage, and this is, this is, this is the, the current at a fixed drain voltage in this linear mode situation. So we'd consider that the, the blue data, the PSMN 015100B, what we can see is that um, up to about four, four volts, which you know come flows in above four volts, four, five, and six, the current suddenly starts to increase, exactly the same as this graph. At four volts in the gate, there's virtually no current flowing, not uh, on this scale anyhow. At five volts, the current starts to flow, and then the current at six volts in the gate has got up to something close to 100 amps, just like the graph shows. And we've got similar characteristics then for the other two types, the, the, nine, the PSMN09100 being light green, and the PSMN3R8100BS in the red. <coughs> so you can see for all three MOSFETs, as we, the gate bias increases, the current increases. Now the other thing that's been plotted on here, we've got a solid line and a, dot, a dashed line for each graph, for each, for each device. The solid line is the, the current flowing if the MOSFET's held at 25 degrees Celsius. The dashed line in each case is if the, the current that's flowing if the MOSFET's operated at 175 degrees Celsius, if the whole device has been heated up. And what you can see in each case, more current comes out of the MOSFET at 175 degrees Celsius than at 25 degrees Celsius. And this is very, very critical in understanding whether the device will be stable in linear mode or not. <coughs> So let's just uh, well, let's explore that a bit, bit more closely. So just imagine that you've got, if we can imagine we've got the PSMN 015 100 b We've got it running at 25 degrees Celsius, and, and uh, across the whole piece of silicon, it's all at the same temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. So across the whole piece of silicon, the current density will be the same, and the power density, the power dissipation across the piece of silicon would be uniform. But then just imagine that one little location somewhere it gets slightly hotter than the rest of the silicon. So that's that small location, it's got slightly hotter. If it gets hotter, what's going to happen locally, at that, that, that local location, the current would start to increase because it's got hotter, so the, the current's coming with the same source drain bias and same gate bias. More current would go through that little, little located location, which is hotter. If more current goes through that location, locally we'll get more power dissipation, so you'll be dissipating more heat locally at that spot. But then if you dissipate more heat locally, that hotspot would get even hotter because it's, 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 it's dissipating more heat than everywhere else around. And so what you, can, what you can see very quickly is we've got the potential to get some thermal runaway. We get a hotspot, its, it's current increases, it dissipates more heat, more power, because it dissipates more power, it gets even hotter, and so it gets into a, a real thermal runaway situation. And that, that hotspot will get hotter and hotter and hotter, and before you know what, what could happen, your MOSFET could be destroyed because that one location could, the local the temperature could go up to 175, 300 degrees Celsius. So there's the potential, because of these characteristics, that you could get thermal runaway. But it doesn't always happen, and that's what we want to talk about more. When is it safe to run in linear mode, um, and when is it unsafe? When will, you get, when will you get thermal runaway, and when will you not? Okay, so let's go a bit further. We we'll now consider the, the middle graph. And the middle graph is, is derived from the first graph, but now we are plotting the change in the current with temperature. So we've got the di by dt, and we've plotted it, not against, against, against the gay bias, but we've plotted it against the source drain current. So we've got um, a blue characteristic for the PSMN 015100B, we've got the green characteristic for the second device, and we've got the red characteristic for the, the PSMN 308100BS. And what we can see is that we've gone through the generations, the cell pitch has got uh, increasingly smaller, but when the cell pitch has got smaller, the di by dt has increased. So when you get a hot spot, when one location gets hotter, as the temperature rises, this, this, this tendency for the current to increase has got more and more severe with the new generations. Now, okay, the question is, when is this too severe? When, when, when was it stable? When can we have stable operation? Or when will we get thermal runaway? And, uh, okay, mathematically, you can think, consider this instability. This instability says we'll get thermal runaway if VDS, the source drain voltage, multiplied by the, chain, the DI by DT, the change in current with temperature, exceeds the one over the transient thermal impedance. In, in words, this is saying if the increase in power with temperature exceeds the rate at which we can extract um, power with, with increasing temperature. So this is the, the real mathematical condition for when thermal runaway could happen. So we, we don't want this, to this condition to happen. So what, what would make this condition happen? Well, certainly if the left-hand side gets bigger than the, the right-hand side, we've got thermal runaway. So if VDS is high, we're in an unstable situation. So and whenever you operate a MOSFET with a high source drain bias, that will increase this tendency for runaway. Certainly, if uh, the term on the right-hand side is very, very small, we're going to have a tendency for thermal, thermal, thermal runaway. When will the term on the right-hand side be very, very small? It'll be very, very small when ZTH is big. That basically means big power pulses. So if you're running on DC operation, that's the worst situation. As the power pulse gets smaller and smaller and smaller, the ZTH will get smaller and the term on the right will get bigger. So as you go from DC to maybe 100 milliseconds, 10 milliseconds, 
one millisecond, eventually 100 microseconds. As, you, as you, the time at pulse, uh, the time in linear mode decreases, you'll become more and more stable. <coughs> but then finally, the I by dt. The I by dt, certainly it's got to be positive. And uh, yeah, if the di by dt goes negative, then you've got no problem at all because the terminal left-hand side will always be negative and you won't get thermal runaway. But if the di by dt is big and positive, then you've certainly got this potential for thermal runaway. And that's, yeah, that's basically where we came back originally, that we, we talked about the, uh, the two micron modern device has got a high di by dt, so it's going to be far more susceptible to thermal runaway than the older generations. Okay, <clears throat> so having said all that, now then, yeah, what is the, what is the reality? And when are these devices stable and when are they not? So uh, let's, we'll now consider the, the graph on the, on, the, on the far side and on the right as you're looking. And this is a typical uh, safe operating area characteristic. It tells you where it's safe to operate the MOSFET um, in, in linear mode. So what do we got? We've got? On the y-axis, we've got the source drain current. And on the x-axis, we've got the source drain voltage. And we, we've got a series of characteristics there, a series of curves. And basically, the rule of a safe operating graph is if you operate below the line, that's an, and that's an operation, that's a situation where as a supply, we're saying it's safe to operate the MOSFET. If you go above the lines, then we're, we're giving no recommendation to operate the MOSFET there at all, and it could um, have thermal runaway and be unsafe. So we look back in, let's start, uh, this, is, this is just a typical graph for a 10 millisecond power pulse. If you look on a data sheet, you'll see graphs from everything from DC, 100 milliseconds, 10 milliseconds, all the way down, probably to 100 microseconds. And the exact position of this safe operating line will move as a function of power pulse. But we've chosen the, the 10 millisecond uh, example here. 10 milliseconds is quite a normal switching speed. For something like a hot swap application, it's absolutely typical for how fast, you, how long you might be operating a MOSFET in linear mode. Now, OK, so what have we got? Let's go, which is the most stable device? Well, the most stable device in linear mode, the one with the biggest area you can safely operate, is the blue data, the old MOSFET, the PSMN 015100B. And it's data, there's that blue solid line. And it's just right, we've put it next to a dotted line. The dotted line is basically the theoretical limit. When you take the MOSFET, it's rated to a maximum temperature of 175 degrees Celsius. And basically, that, uh, that PSMN 015100B, you can, you can operate it up to a, a peak junction temperature of 175 degrees Celsius. No derating is needed at all. Across its whole range, it is thermally stable at, ten, at the, the 10 millisecond power pulse. But then we move to the, next, the, 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 the second generation, the, the PSMN 09100B. And now, yeah, the DI by the T has increased. And what we see is, at low source drain voltages, up to uh, about 10 volts, there's no problem. We, we can give you the full rating. But somewhere, about, somewhere between 10 and 20 volts, the characteristics have to be derated. Thermal instability starts to operate here. And so the, the safe operating area has had to be decreased. That's exactly what we said in the, in the characteristic. As the VDS goes high, you've got a potential for thermal, for thermal runaway. And that's quite clearly the situation. And then we come to the most modern MOSFET, what we're talking about here, the PSMN 308-100BS with a 2 micron cell pitch. A great idea song, but now the di by dt is so big that thermal instability happens far, far, far more rapidly. And so here the safe operating area had to be derated basically over its whole linear mode operation. So from, from a couple of volts all the way out to 100 volts, the characteristics had to be derated. You can't operate with such a high current level in linear mode and have safe operation. It is the, there's still a region where there is some safe operating area. It's not a total disaster, but you don't get the full entitlement that you would get from one of the older generations of technology. So, to conclude this part of the talk, quite clearly, yeah, as the, as the cell pitch decreases, the DI by DT increases, and that has meant that with this, we've had to reduce the safe operating area with the, with the smaller cell pitches. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to know more information, have a look at nextspirit.com. <laughs>